Hello, my name's Sue Blackett. I lecture in postgraduate accounting subjects at the Henley Business School at the University of Reading. I taught the students described in the poster for the last academic year. Hello, my name's Vicky Collins and I'm a lecturer in English for academic purposes at the University of Reading. And my role in teaching this cohort uh, is as convener for a module in discipline specific academic writing. And I liaise closely with Sue to determine the students' language and literacy needs. Hence, this is a multidisciplinary perspective. So in outlining the challenges, overall, we identified three main challenges. The first was a threshold level of language proficiency. The second, adaptation to new subject content. And the third was being remote from the university and from the UK. All three of these factors contributed to students constructing fragile digital information ecologies, a term first coined by Nadi and O'Day in 1999. Through observations, practice and virtual learning environment data analytics, we sought to understand the information seeking and use behaviours of this cohort of international students. We sought to mediate this in three key areas shown on our poster. Institutional guidelines on preparing and delivering online content were provided. However, these were not always conducive to the reality of the needs of this cohort, nor in reducing their cognitive load. So we focused on what we've termed the three C's, and this is a summary of strategies and tools used across the three modules, which we taught. Uh, not all of these were used simultaneously, otherwise this would have exacerbated cognitive load rather than reduce it. But we'll talk through each of these in turn. So to begin with compartmentalization, I have learned that without the physical classroom and learning artifacts, students had trouble differentiating modules and tutors online. So I incorporated consistent but mindful use of visually stimulating module branded learning maps, overlays and virtual study scenes to create a cognitive link to the module. Without two screens, unlike most lecturers, the students found the manipulation of multiple documents challenging. And this is where I integrated short interactive tasks created with Xerti, which students could access and complete on their mobile phones whilst they were following main content on their big screens. And these short tasks helped to break up larger monologue style lecture content. In terms of comprehension, I decided to use Microsoft Forms quizzes and embed them into the timelines of Microsoft Stream videos for two reasons. The first was to change the pace and to break down recorded lecture content into more manageable pieces. And students had the opportunity to get their own formative feedback to assess how well they had understood the module materials. In addition, I could use the Microsoft Forms to concept check student understanding by reviewing the forms analytics data and adjust content and delivery in response. What I actually found through the process was that because the language used in the module was very discipline specific, students were mostly translating back to their native languages and the process of translations may have caused significant loss of contextual meaning. This inadvertently and unintentionally increase their cognitive overload. In terms of communication, in the academic writing classes, students collaborated on live shared documents. The level of written participation exceeded that of their spoken participation, proving that students were not passively consuming information. The shared documents also helped to create a class record of responses which I contributed to and facilitated in real time. Like Vicky, I also found that students were generally nervous around online oral communication in English, feeling uncomfortable or sometimes put on the spot if speaking in small groups or to a lecturer. Student webcams were all switched off as students preferred to use the types chat function in Blackboard Collaborate. 
Like Vicky, I also made use of mobile devices, and these were used to communicate and collect typed information, which illustrated individual and group learning through the VVOX app. This served to decrease cognitive load and increase student participation in activities. Finally, VVOX demonstrated how educational technology can be used to overcome student discomfort associated with communicating orally online in a second language. We hope you have found our presentation informative and look forward to receiving your comments and questions. Please scan the QR code for further information. Thank, Thank you. you.